Hello everybody, I am Clint from Princecraft RV and I'm at the Round Rock location today and what is this? Today we're going to look at the Oss RV. Now this is their XL15-4 MK2. That's a lot of stuff, but just know that it is a really cool, very capable off-road hybrid trailer. Let's look at some of the specs. Right up here at the tongue, the tongue weight is 401 pounds. The dry weight is 5,032 pounds, and the GVWR is 6,147 pounds. Now, when this trailer is all opened up, it is 24 foot long. It is just over 10 foot high at 10 foot one inch, and it's right about seven foot six inch wide. Now, you'll see online that they say it's 18 foot wide. That's because it has a little secret. This trailer comes with an additional annex room that, that basically expands it width out and adds this big old enclosed room, including a floor and a skirt for draft. So it's a really cool thing, and we'll talk about that more later. Now, when you're ready to travel down the road, obviously we close this down a little bit. The roof lowers down to eight foot eight inches, which is still too tall to go into a standard American garage. However, you might have a situation that works for you. It also shortens up in length a little bit because this, your sleeping space, closes in, and that brings a trailer down to 22 foot long. So it is pretty easy to travel with, and I think that's about it for the outside right now. We'll come back out here. Let's go inside and check out the interior. Let's go. Okay, here we go. We are inside, and Let's go ahead and get this out of the way. I am six foot four barefooted, about six five in my shoes, and that's what you're seeing here. I do have a little bit of clearance. I would say in here, we're looking about six, seven, six, eight interior. So not bad. Right here at the door, it's, it's a little bit tight elbow room, but I think most of us are going to get into the living space. Let's look right here because this is one of the first things I see is obviously the bunk, this is a great trailer for bringing the littles, maybe your kids or whatnot, or, or any munchkin sized family members you might have. So your bunks, this one is rated at 180 pounds and it does have these cleats here to put a ladder. Let's look at what I see all around. First off, all around we find these lights. Now they are bendable and positionable. They all are switched right on the light base and they all have a holder on the wall we'll try to point a few of those out but this this bunk has it this bunk has it what the top bunk doesn't have is usb and 12 volt connectors the usb and 12 volt are down here on the bottom bunk let me go ahead and do something a little bit goofy i'm going to get in this bottom bunk because they're the same length and we're going to find out if i can go if if me at my height if i can go ahead and lay straight out across so hang tight okay so first off it's a nice mattress and i am laying flat out i, I am not really there's no bend in my knee if you will so my hair is touching but not really anything else and my feet if I point my toes and my shoes, I can touch the wall, but it's actually a pretty good size. So this is a doable bunk for a full-size adult. I am gonna get out though, let's go. Now that I have got out of that bottom bunk, let's talk about what I see right here, maybe these drawers down, down below. First off, it is a shorter door. Obviously there's a step down, I'm gonna step down to it, but if you're tall like me, you could hit your head. They have prepared for that. And so less cranial damage due to this pad. Down here, there is your fire extinguisher, your battery cutoff switch, and there's a lot of light switches down here. We'll roll in some B-roll so you can see what they look like. And they handle something like your awning, power on, in and out, yeah, outdoor lighting, and lighting basically around, including this step here which has a real neat led light around it we'll show you some b-roll of that as well okay let's look at these drawers now they're all constructed pretty well let's take a look at what you're going to see all throughout this trailer and that's going to be this type of latch you've seen latches that you have to unlock by pushing and letting it extend however that doesn't fully unlatch this they want to make sure that you are certain you want to open these so you have to push it to get the knob and then you twist and that is what releases these drawers. That's pretty good size drawer and there's going to be they're going to be the same size 
I believe for all six of these. And then right behind me, I'm gonna switch sides. You have a little cabinet right there. Again, we'll have B-roll to make it a little bit more visible for you, but that's a fair bit of storage for all kinds of things. Knickknacks, paddy wax, clothes, shoes, maybe a little bit of pantry space, you name it. Now let's talk a little bit about the canvas here. It is really, it's really pretty heavy duty feeling and it does have windows that you kind of tent style open up all the way around the space. It makes it feel a little bit more open because you get a little bit of light that comes in and some cross breeze. Now there isn't a big central power fan. There is a nice air conditioner. We'll talk about that in a little bit. There is a fan in the restroom area and there are wall mounted fans in the main sleeping area. Other than that, you're just looking for a good breeze and to move air around the cabin. Let's hop over here and check out this, uh, this wet bath situation that I think is pretty handy. Let's take a look. Okay, I'm standing in the shower area, which is oftentimes a little bit of a harrowing experience because Usually they have to raise the floor. It's a raised shower pan, if you will. This is really pretty nearly, it may be, it may be an inch or so-ish taller than the floor outside the shower, but not by much. So I still have perfectly fine clearance in here. We do have a fan, a vent and a fan, and there's a light switch right above me. And then you have a nice handheld shower unit and it is, it's on there pretty good. And there you go. So it has a nice shower head, a little bit of that water miser kind of style to make sure that you are being efficient with your water usage. Okay. On this side are the controls for the shower and they kind of can be moved to whatever height you need, hot and cold water, shower bar, and another window. And then I'm going to take a look over here. I have a hand washing sink and, and what have you, a little bit of storage down below the sink for whatever you might need to keep in the bathroom area. And then you have your Thetford, I believe it's a C400 toilet. Now that means that it is a cassette toilet. It has its own small black tank. It's gonna be in that kind of five gallon range. And we do have a video on our Tech Tour channel talking about the ins and outs and the maintenance of that toilet system. So do hop on over there. We'll try to keep a link of that in the description below. Let's hop out of the bathroom area and look at the interior a little bit further. All right, so here we are back at the kitchen and it's pretty basic, but it's all you need. Let's look at the sink and it's a fairly deep sink. It, obviously you want it to get out of the way so you can cover it up, have some extra countertop. The sink gets, the uh, faucet gets out of the way, hot, cold water, fairly basic, easy to clean, metal. And then we have a three burner Thetford stove. I love it. It's a great amount of space and it is configured well. And I mean, with these surfaces and a nice breeze here that you can get, you can kind of cook in a nice situation. Is it a whole lot of space? No, but it, it's, it's really good. Plus, they have a plan for you to do a fair bit of your cooking while you're outside enjoying nature. So we'll look at that option here in a little bit. While I'm here, I would like to talk about these windows. All the way around, we have these dual pane windows and you've probably seen them on a lot of trailers by now. So obviously we want to unlock them to use them all the way around. And then they open upward kind of awning style, which means that you're a little bit rough protected, a little bit protected if precipitation is coming down and the wind isn't really blowing crossways very much. So I'm gonna push, we've got a click for a little bit of breeze, a little bit of airflow, and another click to open it up a little bit. And if I had all the windows up open around here and a good breeze coming through, it would do pretty good. Now I believe one more click is about it, but that's really quite open. Now while it's open, I might want to keep those flies out. So I have a bug screen that comes down and I have a blackout shade that comes up and I can connect them and kind of do a, a balance of the, of the both. So there we go. That's going to be all these windows all the way around the cabin. So I'm going to close this and give you one more piece of information on this. Right on these latches, there are, you can latch them all the way in for travel 
which is what you want to do because you don't want wind to grab this while you're driving and to, and to want to pull at your window, maybe even pull it off. But while you are camping, if you just need a little bit of ventilation in one window or all the way around, there's a little bit of a space and you can put like basically one click on those and it'll open up just enough. You can hardly even tell, but it is, it is just a little bit away from that seal so you can have some airflow come in. I like it. I'm going to secure this and we're going to move over to the dinette area. Okay, so we're in the dinette area. Before I really get into this, I did just notice that I have what looks like a converter, but it really is just a breaker box because uh, the Oz trailers or MDC USA uses a different system for bringing power, shore power in and charging the batteries. They have a different battery management system, so it doesn't run through your traditional or what we consider traditional converter. You do have your GFCI outlets and your 12 volt and your USB outlets, a little bit of storage space here. I see speakers, I see the air conditioner, and boy, I missed a lot of things. There's storage right here. So let's take a quick look at the storage. These drawers are made obviously the same way of the same things with the same latches, but this one is short because the sink drops down into that space. You just don't have enough space for a full drawer, but I could put all kinds of useful cooking knickknacks there. And then we get into a little bit of actual storage here. Let's look at this drawer and it's a bit deeper, lots, lots deeper, but I guess because the stove doesn't sink down quite as far. And then we have, this is, this is what PJ would call smart storage because it not only is a little bit of a shelving situation, but it's easy access because you can pull out these really nice metal racks. I think it's pretty cool. Particularly since the walkway here is not the, the widest. If you need to stand to the side like I am and still access everything in that space, it's really easy to do. Now, finally, to the table area. Now, I'm gonna not sit at the dinette just yet, and you may notice I didn't really want to unwrap the mattress, and we'll get to that area, but I'm gonna sit on this very sturdy platform that is generally underneath the mattress to talk about this table. Now, if you have been in the RV world for very long, this is kind of a lagoon style table. And the only thing that doesn't look lagoon is I don't see a lagoon sticker. So maybe it is lagoon, but it's not lagoon. I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's white labeled. The nice thing about these style tables is they really are nearly infinitely positionable. You can, you can rotate them 360 degrees. You can move the post around if your legs out of the way. And so it can get out of the walkway it can be used for eating or for work or what have you it can be a little bit of a side table if you need it to be and this post here is adjustable up and down but this table has a little bit more going on from a trick standpoint let me see if i can lift it off let's loosen that handle and see if we can lift this up and there we go so you'll notice that this pole is reversible in two different ways and you can take this off and it could just stay here for all you care for storage and this one comes off and they actually built into this let me lift this up a little slide right here so if you would like to store this out of the way you can go ahead and do so just like that. So that'll store that, I would, I would cinch down that handle and you'd be set to go. So out of the way it comes. All right, so I got the table out of the way, I got the cushions out of the way, so we can see a little bit of what's going on over here. Let's start with GFCI um, protected switches or outlets right there. We have 12 volt socket we have usb and this button right here is associated with an inverter on the inside we're going to show that in just a minute your connection for the table and then venting let's go ahead and open this up and you're going to see it's actually laid out very nicely they want some airflow around it but they also want you to be able to see what's going on should you ever need to be in here there's a little bit of space here you might be able to use for storage but i wouldn't put too much in here because 
that's why they have the venting is to make sure airflow can take place to, so nothing gets too hot right here we have another gfci protected outlet we have a lot of connections and this is your mini boost now a mini boost acts as a dc to dc charger so the tongue outside i'll try to show this to you has an anderson plug that you can plug into your vehicle now you're going to have to make sure that your tow vehicle is wired to utilize this device but i strongly highly recommend going ahead and having your tow vehicle wired for a dc to dc charger because it charges your battery so much faster than your standard seven pin round plug that most of us have on our tow vehicles i have it on my trailer and it has made a world of difference for me okay this is your bm pro battery plus 35 and that is what they're using in place of what we're used to as a standard kind of fuse box style um, converter to bring in power from shore power what have you or generator and convert it to 12 volt charge your battery and run your your um, 12 volt systems they use the battery plus 35 from bm pro right next to that is your 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter now if you've been around rving for a while you know that there are certain items they just need to be plugged into a standard wall socket and when you are not connected to shore power or generator you might still need a little bit of a little of time to plug in something like a laptop or something like that it has a standard socket the inverter makes that possible you're not going to run just a whole lot of things off of 2000 watts but or not particularly not at the same time not the air conditioner however it will get you by in a pinch on a lot of things so i really like this space it's easy to understand let's get these cushions back and then show you what else is going on towards the back of the trailer Switched it up on you, moved over here, and we have the outlet for your furnace. This is your thermostat to control that furnace. This does not control the air conditioner. The air conditioner has its own uh, controls right on the unit. This is for your Truma Aquago. Now, that is a really cool Truma unit because it supplies hot water pretty much on demand. It's got this, this system, and I don't know the right way to fully explain it, but it kind of keeps circulating the hot water so so that protects your lines for one thing whenever you're running it but it also means that at your sink in the kitchen at your in your bathroom for your shower or at the outdoor sink or outdoor shower you're pretty instantly running warm to hot water right off the bat so you're not wasting water waiting for water, hot water to get to you that's part of being efficient when you're really out and about so I really like that system. You do have a monitor here just to protect you from propane and carbon monoxide. I failed to mention right above your head at the door is the smoke detector. So let's talk real quick about cabinet space here. And here we go, a rather large cabinet. You can do all kinds of things with it, but in the top, you have lots of equipment. One would be your BM Pro battery monitor, and that is actually a bit of a battery monitor and solar controller because you have, get this, 700 watts of installed solar on top of the roof. We'll get some B-roll of that to show you. And that is pretty spectacular. It's not all one panel, it's several panels put together, but that's pretty awesome. Now, we have our tank heater switches, Fantastic for cold weather camping. You got freshwater tank one, freshwater tank two, and gray water. Now, you also have your DC outlets, a switch for that. You want control of all these outlets. It keeps you from accidentally leaving something that's going to siphon off a little bit of your power when you're not watching. Water pump, um, hot water heat, your hot water tank, uh, Truma, and then your furnace, your heater and then your toilet fridge, and that's just 12 volt supplying power to those units. Obviously the toilet has a little bit of circuitry on it and your fridge does too. Um, and then you have a spare switch in case you wanna wire something in. You also have a tank monitor here and it's a really nice situation. In the back corner, you'll find what is, I guess it's a over the air antenna um, booster is what it is so you'll see a little red light on it and that just boosts whatever signal you can get if you're way out there you might not have any signal to boost but if you are camping close enough to civilization then you might have something you can watch if you just boost the signal a little bit down here is just more storage nice little clean shelving space make of it what you will 
And then we get to this area back here. So the easiest thing to do is start right here. Because I do have the mattress, again, I didn't really want to open that up. We're gonna let it be nice and fresh for the new owner. Look at this, the size of this Life Pro 4 battery. I believe this is a 200 amp hour battery and it's very well situated. This box is all metal and it has venting all the way around. And I mean, it's just a nice, easy access situation. I do see some breakers. I felt to mention there's more breakers under here. They seem to have redundant breakers throughout this trailer to help protect your equipment. Um, I love it when there's good thinking ahead. Um, it means that if you're ever out there you and have a problem, you may not be so bad off as you would be if you didn't have that built-in kind of redundancy situation. Now I'm gonna to have to lift this mattress a little bit and we're gonna find out what's underneath this panel right here. Okay, there we are. It just gets in the way just a little bit. And what I'm looking at is I have my furnace and that is propane driven. And then I have my Truma system and also propane involved. Your water pump and a very easy to understand, once again, situation if you ever need to get in here. Now I wouldn't get in here for storage, but I would get in here for access just to check out the health of things. Um, this is a good place to see the back of your outside um, sprayer, wash area. And really there's not much more to say about this spot. I'll show you some, uh, some other things around here. Okay, on both sides of this sleeping space, you're gonna find these fans. Now they are adjustable. You just pull this down and you can put it in all kinds of positions. These blades are very soft, if you will. They bend and flex. So if you get a finger in there, it's not really gonna cause too much problem. You have switches on bottom and top. One of them is for speed and one is actually a fan timer. So that's pretty cool because you can set it up knowing that you're likely to fall asleep in the next hour or so, and then it will turn off to save electricity. Again, they expect you to take this off grid for some of your camping adventures. More of those lamps that can be positioned with their holders, 12 volt USB, and that's the same on this side. Now I'm gonna rotate around here. So follow me if you will. I have a positionable television. It's, it, it can be obviously for the bed area, but this arm has three areas on it that allow you to bring it over here for viewing at the dinette or maybe even, yeah, I think you could watch TV even from the bunks if you wanted to. So that might give the parents a little bit of peace. There's an outlet here, there's 12 volt, and there's your cable TV or satellite inlet, another one of those fans and doing pretty good. I'm gonna look under this panel here, so kind of follow around this way. And this is an interesting one to me because this is a little storage bin right here that you can access from the top, but knowing what I know, I've been outside this trailer, you can actually pull that storage bin out from the outside too. So it's pretty interesting. This is a nice folding inner coil spring bed window that opens the same way as the others for airflow and we'll figure out how to bring this whole works in for travel here in a second let's look up and we have this really cool vent it has a handle that you release it let's go ahead and unlock it because i don't need to be I'm trying to pop this up while it's locked and there we go and you can let the the we washed it <laughs> let the moth in and let the rain down so there it is and it is positionable so it can be a few different positions to to really allow the air in or out let's go ahead and lock that and you'll notice that it is also lit so the button for lighting it right above my head right there Looking around, I don't see all that much more to talk about inside this trailer. So let's head outside and see what we can find there. Okay, we are outside. I do wanna take a moment while I'm at the door to talk about this door. It is a very nice solid door. It has a few things going on that your standard door on most RVs might not have going for it. So there's a few small things and maybe a few bigger points. 
This handle is, is very sturdy, but it has this nice little latch mechanism and it correlates with this cleat over here. So I am able to open this door and tie it into that cleat and there you go. But that's not the only tie down point, if you will, tie down point, anchor point. You also have this anchor here. So you could anchor in two different locations, not at the same time. Let's look and see what else. I may not have mentioned the interior speakers on this trailer, but we do have interior and exterior speakers. You do have the dual pane window here, but this one does not open like the others. It does have blackout curtains, but maybe the, the point that really does it for people is the fact that it's a full length screen door as well, which is why you wanna latch this back. Full length screen door, and it's pretty solid, but look at that. And it has this grid work to keep your screen protected. So pretty fantastic. Lit handle, a nice, easy to use step, solid and brand new. So a little bit, a little bit stiff. There we go. So let me go ahead and get this squared away and we'll move on. Moving along, you're gonna find that this is Four Seasons Ready trailer and they say there is aluminum frames. Now the aluminum frame is really, for that sticker, it's really the superstructure wall up above the chassis frame. That down there is galvanized, hot rolled, square tube, all the acronyms they could throw at it, all the descriptors they could throw at it. Let me just suffice it to say, it is a galvanized, really sturdy welded steel frame down there and a really sturdy and lighter aluminum frame up here. So that's fantastic. My understanding is that there's no wood in the walls either. So if you're worried about old school building methods and um, materials that could swell or rot, you're not going to have the same type of worry with this. Now moving along, we have 110 outlet. And I'm gonna open all these little doors and see what we can find. This one's a fun one because it gives you a little workspace and it's really sturdy, really heavy duty. And they have these cable holes that make it a good solid workspace. Now, there is a switch right here. Pretty handy, light comes on. And same style trays. You know what, I just found out. These are the exact same trays from the inside kitchen. So if you're cooking inside, you can open those doors and these will slide out over there. If you're cooking outside, you can use the same dishes very easily right here. Would you look at that? Okay, the more you know. It has a really heavy door, really heavy seal, and I'm going to move on to the next bin. Now this is for your outdoor entertainment. TV mount, you have plugs, 12 volt cable TV outlet. So pretty set there, same heavy duty door. And if you needed to set something, I don't know, maybe a DVD player, maybe a game console for the kids, that would work as well. Good sturdy place to put it. All right, again, look at the metal kind of siding, this halfway up the wall, good sturdy, and it would seem like it would be um, good for protecting against brush and rocks and what have you. Let's open this one up. Now this is always exciting for the outdoor chef um, amongst your campers. So let's go pour over all the gadgets and gizmos here. The first thing is, re remember that interesting space inside where the mattress would fold down right along this interior wall that I could say, that I said that you could in get to from the front. Well, look at this really cool handle. I'm going to unlatch it and this is that exact same storage bin that you could access from the top if you really needed to. It's not so easy when the bed is um, deployed inside, but you could get to it. But it's a good metal all the way around bin. It has carpet in the floor and nice little things like these metal handles that just kind of get out of the way. This is probably what the chef has been looking forward to. So let's go ahead and open this up. I'm going to release this latch here, spring loaded, again, very solid. And you can 
make it stay up just by rotating it and putting it on, putting it in that little detent there. So that stays out of the way. And then you have another latch here. I'm gonna pull this out. I'm on the wrong side, but we'll fix that here shortly. Now there is a leg that can support this. If you're gonna be using this for any period of time, I would put the leg under this, but just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna tell you that it exists, it's easy to put in, it's a telescoping leg, but let's open up this whole kitchen. First off, over here, look at that, for an outdoor hot and cold water sink, pretty deep metal with a tray that is fantastic for your cook space. Again, all metal, and look at the, the way that they machined their logo into everything. Super nice. Let me come to the front of this because again, it opens up nicely here. And I'm going to make sure that's undone. And this, that lid makes its own shelf as well. And then you have these wind wings, if you will. And look, they thought about it. Let's go ahead and put a tab here that latches into the tabletop to keep it all secured, both sides. Again, they machine, they, they designed this and machine this themselves. And then you have the Thetford stove, the same as the inside, but this one is outside. Fantastic. If you have utensils, there you go. They're ready for you. Soft closed drawers, another drawer for whatever you might need. Soft closed drawer. And then over here is where they intend for you, and they have this little latch to keep it in place. They intend for you to keep your hoses to connect for the water to get to the sink space, but also there's a uh, little fitting underneath to connect your um, gas connection. So there it is. If you needed to get to this while you're cooking, briefly, it does clear. So you're not gonna have to bump it. If you just step back, get what you need to, and then, you're good to go. So that's pretty fantastic. I did fail to mention that there are two switches right down here. Let me find them. One, and they, they really work this light, but there's two different colors of light. There's a white light. Where'd you go, switches? There's a yellow light. And if you're really a party animal, you can run both at the same time. There you go. While I come around, it might not be complete for many of us without a bottle opener right there. And again, it's, it's just nicely done. Let's come around and take a look at this pullout. It is super st solid, sturdy all the way around. It's pretty easy to deploy. We'll get some footage of us doing that here at the end of the video. You'll see us kind of fold it all up and make it ready to go. You'll see that there, if, if you follow me underneath, you're gonna see that this is, again, I mean, they're ready for you. You have two full-size, ready-to-go off-road tires, and they're on these suspension systems that have struts to help you not just drop them down, they're not too heavy, but also to raise them back up when the time comes. So you'll have good ground clearance, you'll have access to your tires. There are tire covers that come with this. They, they just look really cool without the covers on, but there are covers that come with it. They are branded for the Oss RV. You do have tie down points under there. And I do see from here on that corner, the gas port for connecting your outdoor stove. And that pretty much does it for the back while I'm down low. I did just recall that if you look right at the top of this camper, there is an already installed from the factory backup camera ready to go in the middle. But I digress, let's come around the side here. Right around the corner here, I see the access to the Truma AquaGo system. And again, a nice, easy to use door, but it doesn't just run away from you. The wind doesn't just blow it away from you, it's tethered. So easy to understand, easy to maintain, power on and off, emergency blow off valve. It's just, I love easy, easy things. Okay, right here we have your fresh water filler. I guess it's the filler, okay? So for your tank or if you're connecting to city water and then the outlet for your shower and the backside of your furnace. You see a rail here. 
good placement for that because with your outdoor shower, this trailer comes with an outdoor shower room that attaches right there and it's about four foot by four foot and it has a nice little shower base as well. So you can take a shower indoors or outdoors and it's pretty fantastic to have the option. We do have video of PJ describing that shower on another trailer by this manufacturer. So we're gonna roll that footage right now. Let's talk about our shower room. These are so easy to set up. And for those of you who are out there, you know, you may have some outside gear, you get really wet, really muddy. You might wanna shower off in here. It's a great place to start. Let's step inside and take a look. This outside shower is perfectly designed to have an outside porch light coming in. So if it's at night, you've got the light. You've got a handheld shower head that can like strap in right up there and the hot and cold right here. Remember, you've got the Comfort Plus, so it is gonna be circulating. This hot water is gonna come out really quickly. You do have a floor with this. I mean, you've got an outside shower, then you've got the nice inside shower. I mean, it works for everybody in every situation, right? Okay, let's keep moving. Welcome back. And I do want to carry on with this trailer. I want you to notice all the way around. Now, on the MDC USA trailers, these are usually a, an orange, so they're easy to spot and remember to talk about, but I just realized I hadn't talked about them yet. These are rock slider bars or rails to protect your trailer when you are really adventuring. You'll find off-road tires. These are 16 inch rims. And again, the spares are the exact same tire on the same rim. Let's come over here and you're gonna find the cassette for the Thetford cassette toilet. Now we just did a full talk around for the Thetford cassette toilet on our Tech Tour channel, look it up, but I'll give you the basics real quick. When you have used your cassette toilet and the light comes on inside, to tell you that it is time to service it, you'll go ahead and do exactly what I did. You'll just lift this little handle and pull this out. You heard a little click, and I'm gonna take this little fitting off. It's just to, it's kind of a funnel situation. You heard that little click and that was the door from the top, from the bottom of the toilet going into the top of this tank closing. So when you pull this out, that automatically closes and covers the valve so you don't have to worry about getting anything on you. When you flush the toilet, that valve opens. When you, when you stop flushing, the valve closes and this lid closes, you're good to go. So you now have five gallons in your luggable loo, if you will. I hope that's not a branded term. However, you don't want to carry that all the way from your campsite to the dump station. So let's wheel it there using these wheels. But you're gonna to want to pull out this handle and just roll it like you're on the way through the airport. Once you get there, pop that handle right back in and you're at the dump station. Open the dump station, rotate this valve or this hose out, this tube out, and take the lid off. Okay, there you go. We'll just set this aside. I do recommend doing wearing gloves anytime you're messing with anything like this. So we're going to use this back handle, and don't worry about this button just yet. We're gonna use that back handle and we're going to put this in the inlet of the dump station. And now that we are, we are pointed down at the inlet of the dump station, we're going to push this pressure release valve to allow air to flow into the tank. And what that allows it to do is it normalizes the pressure to keep it from glugging. A glugging situation is also a splattering situation. Not fun and not the clean situation you want. So when you're pointed down, you push this. I do recommend that you never, ever, ever, ever push that button while this tank is pointed up because you don't want a chance of that wonderful stuff inside coming out the valve this way. So only when the tube is pointed down would you do that. We're done here, so we're going to Go ahead, put this back on, and be ready to, to return it to service. Okay, I'm gonna put this filler right back there again for storage. 
and give you a few more points on this. I'm gonna slide it back in. You're gonna hear a real positive click while this lid automatically opens up. So here we go. There you go. That lid is now open and we have one more thing to point out here. I wanna rotate this other tube out. This is not the one on the tank. This is where you fill up the flush water tank because this cassette toilet does not use water from your fresh water system at large in your trailer. This has its own flushing reservoir, so you don't have to worry about pulling from your other water situation, whether it be for the shower or for cooking or indoor shower, outdoor shower, what have you. Again, a very solid door, and this one is lockable because you do not want someone to steal your poop. Now, before I go too much further, you're gonna see that there is a fresh water tank, capped, lockable, cap right here, fill point, and there's a gray water tank, capped, seemingly fill point. So this has two fresh water tanks, and the, the phrase I have in mind is daisy chain. They are connected. So what you can do to fill both tanks is unlock this cap, open it up, and start filling up this one. Now it will fill the front tank, and whenever that one reaches a certain level, then it will start to fill the second tank that is behind the axle. So you can do it that way. You can, there is also a fill point back there, so you could feasibly fill the front tank and fill the back tank, or I guess this is the front tank, back tank. Or if you're really industrious and all about time, you might be able to run two water hoses, one here to one there. You might not be as fast at catching the overflow, but you have your options. This other one down here, this other lockable cap is really a flush for your gray water tank. Once you have let your gray water out down here, you can go ahead and you know just run maybe a little gray tank uh, cleaner fluid and just run it, maybe a full tank if you will, and really flush that out to keep it from getting funky or growing anything that you don't want to. Maybe in between trips or in between waypoints, take care of your gray tank. As I look down below, now that I've closed the Thetford toilet, cassette toilet door, there is an outlet here for letting water out of your gray water tank. So you'll notice it's not a full size sewer hose outlet because it's really just shower water, um, maybe some sink water too. So you can easily still run that into a campsite inlet or a dump station inlet, um, or you could even use one of those portable totes. That's oftentimes what I end up using when I'm camping off grid is because I don't have a campsite inlet ready. So just connect a hose from there and you're good to go. Now, again, these really cool dual pane windows, good for thermal, good for impact. I like the way they work. And then, let me see if I have this, there you go. Again, those really great doors. And what you'll see in here, bagged up, are some of the components of the annex room that goes on the other side. We'll talk a little bit about that here in a little bit, but you have the annex room, you have some poles, and there is a light right there. And then you have a pull-out tray. It is carpeted, it's a very solid metal unit, but there's a little divider in here. You're gonna notice it doesn't go very, back very far because there's a divider kind of about the midpoint, maybe a little bit shy of the midpoint of this trailer. So I'm gonna close this up. Turn off that light. We're gonna find right here on the front a very sturdy metal box. I mean, it really is sturdy and it has fantastic latches all the way around. So I'm gonna unlatch all of these and find out what is inside. Gas props to help you to raise and lower them. On the two sides, it is storage, but they also have a little bit of a rack here for a five gallon jerry can, on, one on this side, one on the other, and then a lot of space besides. In the middle, you have two propane tanks. These are your 20 pound propane tanks, and it's actually vented across the bottom. It's almost open, but there's a metal grate at the bottom. So it's sturdy and it's safe, and you have ventilation all like you want it. So let's go ahead and close these up. These latches are really cool because they, first off, they cam into place, they're really sturdy, but there's a little spot right here for a pin, and I 
place those pins elsewhere, but I will put them back on. So every single one of them can be pinned so it doesn't bounce open while you're traveling, or if you want to, you can lock it. Now you're not supposed to lock a cabin that a space that has propane in it. So just keep that in mind. You can pin it, but I would not suggest locking that. Look at this tongue. It's very, very solid. You're going to find, again, that galvanized steel square tube frame. And a few things stick out. Something I don't see on most trailers is a metal spigot for running water at the tongue, which can be very handy if you get your hands just all mucked up. You can right here get some water on them. This is something you don't find on most trailers also, but really handy on an off-road trailer if you need to lock up those wheels at any given time. Let's say at an uneven campsite or you actually are in a situation that you really need space to reorient your tow vehicle on, the, on a narrow cliff or road or what have you. If you need to detach and reorient, this is a good way to lock up those tires. Then you might be able to detach, reposition, reattach, and then get yourself out of a sticky situation. So I really like having a hand operated braking system independent from the electric brake system when you are connected to the trailer. Really sturdy, side mount bogey wheel. I like that it has two wheels because that does make it much easier to roll. They don't dig into well, soil and all that too mu as much. Um, incredibly strong chains and obviously your breakaway hitch. This is that Anderson plug I was telling, no, this is not the Anderson plug. This is the Anderson plug I was telling you about. And that is for your DC to DC charger. I am such a fan of DC to DC chargers. They have really saved me trouble in some of my off-grid camping situations in the Ozark Mountains and whatnot. And this is your seven-way plug. That is pretty standard for trailers other than that. Let's talk briefly about the DT-03 hitch system. Now, this is a 360 degree hitch. It does have kind of a dust cover. When you're all connected and you're, and you're ready to roll, put that on there, keep it clean. But this articulates not just as a regular hitch, but also side to side. So it can be a true 360 degree full capture system. Now what it uses is not your standard ball. It uses a pin system and that pin is on a standard post. But you back up and that pin, you lower this down onto the pin and you're gonna see when I push this button, this collar slides in and it will lock around that pin. I don't know if they actually call it a guillotine system, but it kind of reminds me of a guillotine like that. And that captures it. A really quick and easy way to load and unload your trailer and still get the 360 degree functionality that you want for off-road travel. So really nice area up here. Let's cruise around front and see what we find there. Okay, so we are on this side and I have a few more things to go over. This thing still looks really graphically stunning. And I will show you, there's a little bit of a Keter style rail here. And then there's some attachment points all the way around these little buttons. And that is for the annex style room that you can add on to really extend your camping living space and even enclose it from the weather if you want. It has a floor, it has a draft skirt, it's really cool. And I'm going to let PJ show you what it looks like on another MDC trailer now. It's really amazing. Let's step inside. Now, I'm not gonna lie. This did take us just a few minutes to set up, but well worth it if you need that extra space. I mean, it protects you from the elements. It's gonna give you the shade, the bug protection. And yes, if you get some weather, every screen has a roll down to protect you from the weather. So really nice setup in here. You've got the kitchen behind me. We've already gone through that. Um, lighted handle, porch light is on the inside, table to set up there. So you could use this room for sleeping, for hanging out, whatever works for you. Such a great feature. And did I mention it is included in every trailer? Not only is this a great space, but you have option for an additional door on this end. So it really depends on what works best for you, how you lay it out, and what you're using it for. 
A few more things I want to point out about this annex room. The waterproof floor comes with it. Awesome. And you do have a waterproof skirt right here up against the trailer. So it is fully enclosed. If you wanted to get more poles, I did notice there are grommets at the end of the window coverings. So you could extend those out for rain flies, maybe additional shade, whatever works for you. Extremely durable, extremely versatile. This is such a great addition. We are back and we have just a couple more things. In this cabinet, this door, once you open it, you're gonna notice it's vented. And that is for a reason. This tray in here, let's put this light switch. This tray in here is specifically designed, though you don't have to use it for it, for a rather large 12 volt compressor style refrigerator. You may have noticed inside the camper that there is not a refrigerator inside. So keep that in mind. But if you're really outdoorsy and you expect to be doing most of your cooking and your activities outside, this is a can be a large refrigerator, dual zone refrigerator, freezer situation. Right here, very accessible. You can see this a pretty deep area and there is your 12 volt socket right on the inside here. I didn't mention underneath that this has a very heavy duty suspension package. It's long trailing garden suspension. They have dual shocks, rather large springs, and they're independent to allow you to keep contact with the road. And, and it just really pulls well, not just in highway scenarios, but also in off road, kind of gravel road, forest road, and I have to admit, if you look at some of the places MDC has taken their trailers for promotional videos, it's flat out nuts. And those trailers are still serviceable and still out there camping. And it is very impressive. All to the fact that it's a very sturdy, solid frame on an incredible suspension system. Now, one more thing is you want to travel safe while you're on the highway. And with something that so many people are afraid of or hear about is trailer sway. Well, you may in other trailer situations add a weight distribution hitch or trailer sway mechanism that is me uh, mechanical, but this comes with a, an electronic trail assure system and it is a asymmetric electric braking system. Asymmetric means that it has the ability to actuate the brakes on one side or the other and it's monitoring at all times. So 200 times per second, I believe, it is checking for little indications that that trailer's about to get squirrely and it starts using those brakes independently just right to allow you to keep on pulling and have a stable, steady, calm trailer. Now, when you leave the pavement, you don't really want that happening. You want to know what your tires are doing all the time. And it can also detect that you are now off the pavement and on more of a dirt gravel situation. And it'll turn off the system and it'll start checking every five seconds. And once it feels like you're back on the pavement or the asphalt, it turns the system back on and you're good to go down the road. Really cool. I think that does it for the walk around of this trailer, but I think it is also time for us to maybe do a music montage, put the awning out, put the awning in, close the top down, put the bed area in. What do you say? Music montage. dark night it's too hard for me to say now if the rays of hope will shine again someday and if i might be spared as the tempest starts to swell at this point it's just too dark to tell was the stars guiding me to god's shores now was the devil set me drifting once more? Will these clouds ever lift and the map again reveal? And 
this point it's just too dark to tell if these green night blues would lighten up if my nature would shake this wicked spell if this midnight sky would brighten up if my ears could hear a voice saying all will be well then all is well all is well I once was found now again I'm lost on merciless waves I am tossed I would tell you of his grace and how it was I fell but some tales are just too dark to tell Not too bad for a really cool trailer. It's a little bit lower, it's a little bit shorter, maybe a little bit more compact, easier to maneuver while you're driving on the highway and also off-road. I still love how functional this little hybrid trailer is. And if you think it'll work for your type of camping, for you, for you and your family, maybe the kids are coming along, and do you wanna get off-grid and off the road a little bit, I, inv I invite you to check out the Aus RV trailers. We have them here at Princess Craft. Check them out at princesscraft.com. And until then, it has been an absolute pleasure to show you this trailer, and I will see you next time. I once was found, now again I'm lost. On merciless waves I am tossed. I would tell you of his grace and how it was I fell. But some tales are just too dark to tell.